When it comes to their resin releases, Diamond Select is unstoppable. This is your look at the Diamond Select Premier Collection Juggernaut Resin Statue. This approximately 11-inch resin statue of Juggernaut is based on his comic book appearance and features detailed sculpting and paint applications. It's limited to 3,000 pieces, each with a hand-numbered certificate of authenticity. The statue was sculpted by Sam Greenwell from a design from Nelson X Asensio. Probably be a good idea to get the measurements going for Juggernaut now, as once we start this review, you know you won't be able to stop it. As a reference to Juggernaut. First thing we're going to do, like I said, is figure out just how tall the statue actually stands. Taking the tape measure to the very top of his head, right there, and stopping it. The very impressive Juggernaut stands towering at 11 inches in height. And switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the statue standing 28 centimeters exactly. To come included with the statue, you do get yourself a certificate of authenticity. Here would be listed a number out of the limited run of 3,000. But because this was generously provided by the folks over at Diamond Select for the sake of this review, you can see the number there isn't there. But normally it would if you pick this statue up for yourself. The certificate indicates that this is an authentic Diamond Select Toys Premier Collection Juggernaut resin statue. Once again, sculpted by Sam Greenwell and a design by Nelson X Asensio. One of these days I say to myself, I'm going to bring an actual scale, I think, to these reviews. As some of these pieces are misleadingly heavy. Case in point here is the Juggernaut. You don't know how heavy this is until you actually pick this up for yourself. Speaking of picking it up, let's quickly pick this one up, and I'm sure we're probably going to get a workout going for this particular review. As you can see, the terrain, or what's left of it at least, happens to be the display bottom that the Juggernaut is standing on top of. And while there isn't really a whole lot of color to be spoken of here, I mean, it's basically just grays of different shades, it really is a nice looking terrain. I guess it could have brought in a couple of little bits of color so it wasn't just all gray all the way around, but it really does have some fantastic detailing and sculpting to each of those individual pieces of rubble. Flipping the statue upside down very, very carefully. On the underside, again, we're treated to Premier Collection Juggernaut Resin Statue with not one, not two, but four rubberized feet on the underside to prevent any scratching on surfaces. Right out the gate, one of the things I really like about the statue is they put him in a perfect Juggernaut pose. You wouldn't want to have Juggernaut simply just standing there looking for something to do. No, Juggernaut should be running, and while he's not necessarily in complete running pose, it certainly looks like he's about to start his run, and we all know when a Juggernaut starts running, you can't stop him. Nice detailing done on his rather large boots. I mean, good a good gander at how big these boots actually are. It's a good opportunity because there's a much larger landscape to work with. The diamond really did put a lot of detail into the boots themselves. While on camera, they come across a little bit more of the traditional red. I feel like in person, this shade that you're looking at right now is one shade darker. It might just be the studio lights. But nice texturing and shading that they added even to the, the cup, the flap that folds down on the boot. Very carefully spinning this around, they went to the fullest of extents and even sculpted the undersole. A nice touch as well. A few little scratchings and dry brushings of gray have been added in there as well, so it does look like an actual sole of a boot. Spinning this again carefully, carefully around. Um, the coloring of Juggernaut, I feel, is very muted. In fact, actually, like the coloring all on the brown specifically I feel is where they've toned it down a bit. Usually when I think Juggernaut, I'm thinking like more dark contrasting browns. And here in this case, it actually comes across like it's a little bit more of like, it's almost coming across, at least for me, like a brownish gray color. Uh, again, there's also some additional coloring that they've added in there as well. But like the main base color, I feel is a very soft brown. Wish they could have maybe darkened that just a slight bit. 
Of course, the midsection of Juggernaut is where you do get that little breakup of color. It happens to be the exact same color on his boots. Of course, here he's striped it off. And then you can see some abdomen muscles in there as well. Some nice shading that's been added to that area also as well. Looking at his face, this is really where it can make and break a statue. If the face sculpt isn't there, then I feel like it's a dis disappointing statue. But, I mean, admittingly so, that's a good-looking face sculpt that they gave for Juggernaut. I do ask the question, I wonder if there's going to be ever a variant for this guy. Because obviously, as you can see, he's wearing his helmet. You can't remove the helmet. And he has, while he has a bit of a grimace on his face, he doesn't actually show visible teeth. For me, when I think Juggernaut, I always think of him with full teeth sported from side to side. And this one doesn't actually have it. I'm wondering if maybe down the road, if they would ever give the idea of maybe re-releasing this guy as a variation. They wouldn't really have to change too much for the rest of his body. They keep all the details intact, including a really nice looking helmet here. But maybe the idea of also giving him just those visible teeth, I think would also work quite well. I like the face sculpt. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Uh, again, you've got the face slightly more recessed versus the rest of his helmet. It's just enough, again, that it casts a natural shadow hanging down over top of his eyes. I mean, you can still see his eyes, but they're not as clear as perhaps like an illustration, for example. And it does give you that sense of depth, and I like that a lot. I'm really happy with how the helmet actually turned out. You see the little rivet points that goes all the way around, banding completely around the bottom of the helmet with natural little brushings of silver just to add some stress so it looks like it's been worn and used. Of course, Juggernaut's also a big boy, so not only is he going to be big in the torso, big in the legs, but he's also going to have these tree trunk-sized arms. Well done here in the premiere version of him. You can even see that they've done vein work here on the tops of his shoulders, running down the mid-area of his bicep and also onto his forearms. Hopefully the camera is picking it up that there's these little speckles of color that they added also to the flesh tone. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be mud or if that's just freckles on his skin. If it's freckles on his skin, that's really a nice touch. Now that's the case also on both sides. I asked the question to myself, could the veins have been a little darker in color? The only problem is when you do put veins on characters, especially in statues, and then you t decide to darken these, I feel like it would look a little too extreme. In this case, I'm glad that they put the veins in his arms. I'm also glad that they didn't feel the need to go in there and darken those, because I do think like too much of that would detract away from the statue. Of course, the other calling card for the Juggernaut is these large bands that run across his biceps, run across his forearms, and also go across his four fingers. These are nicely done because you can see that there's indentations, imperfections, and just overall wear and tear to these. They've been done in kind of a dark chestnut brown with what almost looks to be like a brushing of black over top of it. So, so you can see those little dents and imperfections. I really like the way that they've done that. Overall, it's a great looking statue. The only talking point I would make about it is the specific brown that they decided to use for his body. While it is traditional juggernaut brown, I feel like the colors are a little on the, I don't want to say muted side, but they're definitely a softer version of those colors that we're used to seeing on Juggernaut. Both his mid-torso here, the top torso, and his, of course his legs, anywhere that that is that brown color, and even in the mid-torso, the lighter reddish brown, I feel like are very softened in color scheme. If literally they had like a little dial for contrast, if they had just darkened it, maybe one shade or two, just to enhance the color scheme of his of his costume. And that actually carries over also into his head as well. The helmet is really good, but I feel like the uh, the colors are just slightly muted, just slightly muted. Other than that, I mean, it's just a, such a great looking statue. Now that we have ourselves, what I feel is like a definitive looking juggernaut statue. The only other thing I feel like Diamond Select could release is re-release this statue again, now with the grimmest face right there, with the visible teeth. Because as it stands right now, Juggernaut is kind of ticked off, but he's not the angry expressioned Juggernaut that we're used to seeing on the character. 
other than that, I mean, it's such a great looking st statue and substantially heavy as well. I've got myself quite the considerable workout over the course of this review, lifting and moving this juggernaut around so I can show you the details that Diamond Select put into this piece. On my list of favorite Marvel supervillains, Juggernaut makes up pretty high up there on the list. I've always been a big fan of the design of the character and especially liked his superpowers. Literally, he's a running, unstoppable juggernaut. Once he gets to running, you better get out of his way because stopping him is probably not going to happen. Perfectly captured here by the folks over at Diamond Select as a resin statue release, he certainly does fit the moniker of Premier Collection. Both in the sculpt, the paint application, and the base itself, Juggernaut delivers everything I would want in a Juggernaut statue, right down to the pose. Short of him actually leaving the ground, which would be impossible for him being as a resin statue after all, he does everything exactly the way I would want Juggernaut to be. There are things, yes, I probably would have changed, perhaps the coloring of his costume overall, I just feel is a little on the softer side, if that makes any sense. Darken that a little bit. And maybe down the road, re-release this guy in a variant that has the grimmest face. You got yourself a perfect juggernaut. He's perfect already as it is, but loving to see what he could be uh, released as if they gave him the grimmest face. You never know. The fact that they have these molds, and I always say this very, very frequently when it comes to especially their gallery statue releases. If Diamond already has this mold in their wor workshop, essentially, they could easily just go back retool only the faceplate, the mouth area specifically, and just re-release this guy in the grimmest face sculpt. Just maybe give him a little bit more damage to the terrain that he's on. You got yourself an instant variant. As it stands right now, really liking the design of Juggernaut. Uh, Juggernaut, again, I'm a little biased towards because I've always been a big fan of the character, but I definitely feel like Diamond Select delivered exactly the kind of Juggernaut I would want to have on display. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Premier Collection Juggernaut Resin Statue. I'd also like to send out a big mad props thanks to the folks over at Diamond Select who actually provided the sample of Juggernaut that we had a look at in this review. I'm asking a lot right now. I'm sure of my turntable. My turntable's like, what do you have on me right now? Why is this thing so heavy? The Juggernaut Statue is heavy. I feel like I've gotten myself a workout. If you enjoy the content you're liking to, and you're enjoying the content you're seeing on this channel and you'd like to stay on board... Would you consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and just keep in mind, new viewing audience, that videos come onto this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's the best way to keep track of video content coming onto this channel instead of just guessing as to when I'm going to have new videos. Without fail, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And going back to talking about Diamond Select, if you're also wanting to see all the stuff that Diamond Select has in the pipeline before it hits eventual retail and comic book stores, you may want to also subscribe to Diamond Select's YouTube channel. I'll provide the link down below in the video description. Speaking of Diamond Select, also we're going to be having a look at a whole bunch of Diamond Select reviews, statues, figures, and so much more. So keep your peepers peeled to this channel regularly, Monday to Friday. And as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.